you will be into web. I'm Nostalgic Dave and welcome to a game called I guess it's not gonna show okay. <laughs> welcome to Free Dot Will. Why do I get the feeling it's not really full free will? Two player. This game contains disturbing content, not suitable for everybody. Play at your own discretion. Sincerely, Team Helix. Yes. Press space to continue. Okay. This version was released just a few days ago. Uh, version 0.12545.2. Wow. I like looking around and I can see different things. Save us. Make it stop. It hurts. Please. Help me. <laughs> I love I love this one over here. It's just like a, it, it's, it, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, free will is a disease. Oliver Nelson. Wow. Oh, it's an escape your room thing. Okay. Find the open, find it to open the door and advance to the next room. Click on items around the room too. I know how to do it, this kind of thing, dude. Inside this drawer lays a silver key. You picked it up. Not the right fit for the door, but it might work on something else. How about this? Inside you find a key that looks like the right fit for a door. There's nothing left in the chest. Well, can I take this? It's an empty syringe. A chill runs down your spine when you pick it up. As you turn it over in your hands, you imagine the feeling of the needle puncturing your flesh. That's odd. You feel the first prick as the sharp point makes first contact with your skin. What am I doing? Then comes the then comes the strange cold sensation as it pushes deeper. Then the needle is withdrawn, leaving you with soreness at the spot of impact. But there's no real soreness. This is all just in your head. The syringe looks like it's been used recently. Are we sure that was in my head? Alright, I'm leaving. Goodbye. Squee, hi. You look a bit creepy. Where's the rest of your face, buddy? The exit for this room requires two keys. Oh. Find them to open the door and advance the next room. It's grandfather clock. Time displayed is stuck at three o'clock. Okay. Stop ticking a long time ago. Feel like you've seen this painting before. Looking at it brings back an uneasy feeling. Its eyes seem to follow you wherever you go. Looking behind it, you find a key. Why the hell is there a key behind it? A rotten stench is em emanating from this couch. There's some mold growing on the back. Cushions are warm, as if people were recently sitting here. Between them, a key is wedged. Okay, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave now. Bye. Squee! And this one requires two, doesn't it? It's a vice. And a poorly constructed one at that. This looks like it was constructed by a pottery novice. It's lopsided and everything. Shameful. Inside you find a key. Hello? Mom? Mom, I can't hear you. Mom? Uh. Small window. The glass is dirty and stained. 
You can faintly see handprints along it. Peer outside only to see darkness. Is there anything there? There is a key on the windowsill. That's a little weird. Okay, goodbye. What? Okay. Do 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 do. Do do. Boop. Ugh. What did I just inject myself with? Ooh, okay. I'm just gonna imagine this is Sans and Papyrus. This door requires three keys. You open the door below the sink and look inside. The walls are damp and mold. Lines the corners. Okay. The faucet is old and rusty. It's dripping faintly. The water seems thick and mucky. It that even... Is that even water? I don't know. Place it on the kitchen table is covered in strange stains. Some of them are red. Experiment log one. Today marks the planning of an experiment with the potential to change the world. The world is only dying because of the presence of free will. Wow. In human minds. If I can get rid of free will, I can save the world. I've chosen four subjects to conduct my test on. An adult female Two adult males, and one child. Why the child? They will undergo my specialized treatment under careful supervision. The treatment consists of a regular dosage of narcotics and negative reinforcement through physical means. I don't like this idea. No matter what happens, no matter how far it goes, no matter how much a hurt is involved, all I need to do is remember one thing. Free will is a disease. I disagree, sir. Place on this kitchen, blah, blah, blah. Okay, same thing. This kitchen chair squeaks when you move it. So do the doors. There are scratches all over the legs. That's smaller writing. <laughs> I've found that sometimes when I dream, things look strange. The proportions of certain objects, like doors and dressers, are off. Some things appear smaller or larger than they should. It's happened so frequently in my dreams that I can now identify whether or not I'm inside a dream just by analyzing the proportions of the object and the world around me. Next time you have a dream, look for the objects that don't appear proportionally correct. So like this. Yep. Okay. It's a eerie painting of two malnourished men. They look like skeletons of flesh. You can see the skin hanging loosely off their bones. Ew! It makes you uncomfortable looking at that. That statement looked, made me th fuck. <laughs> no, it didn't. No, don't worry. I haven't done that. Uh, that statement made me uneasy. Behind the frame lies a key. Yeah, I see. Oh! There were two keys. That's cool. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> What's that say? It's a diploma awarded to somebody named Oliver Nelson. Wedged in the frame, you find a key. Alright. This is the table where the subjects ate. Wait, am I Oliver? Squeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Not a single one of them is clean. Wow. A covered in dried food. Most of them are chipped. There are two bowls in this drawer. One of them is empty and cracked. It looks like it hasn't been used in a very long time. The other one looks more recent. It's clean and has no cracks. A single fingernail li lays... I feel like lies is the right... No, no, lays. Inside it. Now I want lays! <laughs> Mom, can we go buy some... Oh, right, the phone's not working. Okay. It must have been torn off recently. There's a little bit of skin on it. Ew! This handle makes a horrible grinding sound as you turn the water on. It's like nails on a chalkboard. A key falls out of the faucet. Well, that's weird. Inside this drawer is a piece of paper. Experiment Log 2. I've acquired all four subjects. They're being held in the rooms I set aside for them. I'm incredibly eager to begin the experiments. I think they'll find things much easier if they obey. If they don't, they'll have to go through a few sessions with me in the room. But as I give them the narcotics, they'll find it harder and harder to put up a fight or disobey. In theory, this is perfect. Their ability to make their own choices is what I'm trying to rid them of. Their liberation begins today. Free will is a disease. Okay. As you open the door to the fridge, you're hit with a pungent smell. Ugh. Okay. Inside the fridge, there's a mound of some type of meat. You can't tell exactly what animal it came from, but you can tell it's not fresh. The outer layer is scattered with sores. It's blistering and peeling off juices ooze from... Okay. Looks like there's some skin on part of it. Looking closer, you see a bit of metal poking through the surface. Taking a deep breath, you close your eyes and plunge your hands into the meat. It's soft and clings to your skin. Juices splash onto your hands, and you dig for the key. At last, you pull it out. Alright, uh... Curiosity killed the cat, but the freezer contains only bags of frozen food. Oh, okay. Go figure. Squeak! Retrieve the child. Da 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 Hey kid, go with me! Uh, what is this? You stick your head inside the fireplace. As soon as you breathe in, ash fills your lungs. As you poke around inside, you feel the crinkly sensation of the ash crumbling under your touch. Hello? Testing is going as expected thus far. The subjects are learning the rules of the experiment. They put up a fight at first, but that's to be expected. All the adults fought extremely hard to, the, to resist, but in the end, their attempts were futile. As punishment, they each went through a session in the room. For their very first session, I drew inspiration from the New Testament. First, I placed a nail above their wrists. Once I had strapped them into the chair, then I pulled out the hammer from the drawer and sh God. You pull on a Christ on them, huh? Okay. Their screams filled the house. Hopefully they'll learn to cooperate next time. Next time they'll be dead. There won't be a next time. This television set in... This television... Oh, gosh. This television set... Is ancient. 
You try to hit buttons. No, it doesn't work. Find a key on top of the TV for some reason. Why? Okay. Let's look out the window. This window has a small crack running along it. You wonder how it got there. So you look outside, you see nothing. Literally. There's nothing out there. It's as if matters stops beyond the house and nothing else exists. <sighs> On the windowsill, you find a key. It's an old wooden table. That's covered in dust and grime. A millipede lays dead on the table. Its once vibrant shell has decayed and become a smudged beige color. Its many legs are so brittle they look like they could be snapped off by a gentle tap. Yeah. Dozens of maggots crawl in and out of the millipede's shell. Alright, I'm out of here. See ya. Hey! Are you listening? No! If you don't... Oh crap, I missed that first dialogue. Boz, read it. You'll be stuck in here forever. You need to wake up. You already escaped once. I know you can do it again. Hang in there. I'm going to get you out. I just need to find a way. There's a key behind the frame. This fabric is uh, on this ca old couch that is tearing. There's a tiny hole in the back. You can see stuffing bulging out slightly from the hole. There's a strange stain on the cushion. You find a silver key under the seat. Can I use the key on this? Use the silver key to open the silver chest. Go figure. <laughs> Inside you find a bloody nail. Okay! Light bulb flickers on and off when you turn it on. When you turn it off or on, I guess it doesn't really matter. You touch the lampshade. It mo it's moist. It moist! Find a piece of paper on this table. The child has been responding very well to the procedure. At first, like the others, she was hesitant and rebellious. But as the effect of the drugs takes shape within her mind, she's becoming much more obedient. I believe her new found perfection is not only due to the narcotics, but also in part to her last session in the room. Her first one, in which I drove nails into her wrists, had a more negative impact than I had expected. She became scared and would lash out instead, well duh, of following orders. To get her to understand, I repeatedly told her that free will is a curse, but that didn't work either. So, for her next session, in the room, I decided to try something new. I had to make sure she never forgot what she needed cure, what she needed curing. So, I burned it into her midsection. The scars won't let her forget it. She's been branded with it. Free will's a disease. You burned those words into her? Literally? What the hell is wrong with you, dude? Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Alright, I'm out of here. See ya. Just keep making your way through the rooms. Still looking for a way out. Remember, nothing is real. You should okay! Alright. Uh. There's no need to inspect it further. Yeah. You already know what's in there. There's a key next to it on the table. <coughs> you recognize this teddy bear. She used to carry it everywhere. It's dotted with her blood. It's a key in its lap. Oh well. Find two pieces of paper next to it. 
Really? Okay, what's well, the first? The experiment is having ver varied effects on the subjects. Karen Hudson, subject one, has begun suffering from apparent depression and lack of motivation. She lays in her bed all day, unmoving. She only stirs when given a task. William Brown, subject two, seems blank, as if he has no individual thoughts or ideas whatsoever. He obeys every command to a fault. His progress in free will reduction has been phenomenal. I hope the others will achieve the same level of success as him. Sophia Weaver, the child, is also doing well in the treatment. Whether this is due to actual progress and reduction, or for, in reducing her free will, or simply out of fear of another session in the room, that's more likely the case. I don't know. I feel Charles Aaron, Charles Aaron's reaction to treatment the most curious. He's developed several strange, often sadistic tendencies. He refuses orders on purpose so that he can spend another session in the room. What? I believe he enjoys them. He's also began requesting additional silverware at mealtime, particularly knives. I believe he has a collection. I'll continue to monitor his progress. Charles Aaron's requests continued to fascinate me. I had not anticipated such unorthodox behavior from a subject. At this point in the experiment, the subjects have met each have met each other a few times during the sessions. I've allocated for them to socialize with one another. Today, after time was up and I was tending to each subject individually, Charles requested that I leave him with the child alone. No! Together for a while. While my instincts are telling me not to allow this, my curiosity has been piqued. I know it's dangerous, but it's for science. Free will is a de disease. If that was true, you just proved it. It's not true, but... You're an idiot. A guy who's addicted to hurting himself. Leave him with a child. He's gonna kill the child, dude. There's blood all over this table. Sitting in one of the puddles is a key. Squeak! Retrieve her. Oh, I was gonna say, how is that even possible? Because you can first. Oh, okay! Woo! Woo! Oh, well, okay. This might take a while! Oh, well, okay. Jeez Louise, I suck at this. To be fair, I've always been pretty bad at platformers. Alright, I retrieved her. Hi! Oh my god! You need to get out of here ASAP before he gets you. Quickly, find the key and go through the door. Those chests bound down to be unlocked. This chest requires pink, orange. Inside you find a pink key. Find a blue key. Yellow key. 
Red key. Silver key. See ya. Bye. Oh, God. This is the room. It's best not to linger here. I can still hear the screams echoing off the walls. You remember this chair? You didn't ever want to see it again. The ropes he used to tie people down are still sitting on it. So who am I playing as? They're covered in dry, crusty blood. You don't know why. Sheer curiosity, maybe. But you run your fingers along the red-stained fabric. Doing so brings back all the pain at once. Fingernails breaking, bones snapping, skin opening, burns blistering. No! Mm -mm. A screeching, blinding, numb, numb, numb. <sighs> Numbing, scratching, tearing, burning, stinging, clawing, slicing, it doesn't stop. You tear your hand away from the chair and stagger back. Never again. Inside this drawer, you find several rusty nails and syringe needles. Hello. I could not have made a greater mistake. The meeting between Charles and the child went horribly. I knew I shouldn't have agreed to let him have her. What was I thinking? Now the child is dead. Called it! Called it! I should have known to check him before letting him see her after all his strange behavior. Charles shuck in a steak. Sn Charles snuck in a steak knife he had stolen from his last session in the room and wasted no time once they were alone. You mutilated her with a passion I have never seen before. Each slash and stab only further diminished any hope there was that the child might live. Her blood splattered the walls. Her entrails poured from the gashes in her body. By the time I got in there to stop him, it was too late. Right now, he's locked in his room. I don't know what to do with him. I've put away her body and washed her remains out of the room. As for the experiment, I have no choice but to continue. I have to proceed. I can't write any more of these logs. I need to put all my efforts into making sure there isn't another... Oh, my God. That bugs me. That's the wrong kind of there, dude. There isn't another incident. Goodbye for now. He laughed while he did it. In the very back of the drawer, you find a key. This drawer looks like it was cleaned out hastily. You find a key in the back. Alright, goodbye. Can't find a way out. Keep moving. I think I'll think of something. It's a bunch of pictures drawn by a child. Okay, so this is the child's room. There is a used syringe in the drawer. It's the one used on the child. There's a single half melted crayon in the drawer. Okay? This bed belonged to the child. It's sloppily made just like you expected. Nobody's touched it in a long time. Find a key on top of the sheets. Oops, I did not. This old wooden desk has seen better days. There are some strange markings carved along the side. The markings seem to depict sets of mirrored triangles facing each other. Like hourglasses. There's a piece of paper on the top of the desk. Dear Diary, Life isn't so bad here. The doctor is nice to me when I listen to him. I think he's just lonely. I bet if he had more friends, then he'd be less uptight. He gets angry when I don't listen and takes me into the room. I like it here, but I miss Mommy and Daddy. I like it here. The doctor said I can't see them because I'm sick. I need to be cured. 
but I don't feel sick. Last time I was sick, I threw up everywhere and got to stay home from school. I'm not through. I'm not throwing up, so I don't think I'm sick. But I'm just going to listen to him. Love, Sophia. That's cute. There's a key next to the paper. That's adorable. Dude, why'd you do this to a child? Retrieve him. Oh God. Oops. Oh well. Epic fail. How am I still here? That wasn't a- Why did your eyes glow? How is it that you escaped the first time? The telephone, right? You called the police and they rescued you. Keep moving for now. I'm going to look for a telephone around here. This drawer takes some effort to open. Hello? So you finally get into it. You find this piece of paper in it. The doctor is making me write this. I refuse to talk to him anymore. So this is how he's making me write to communicate to him. But I really don't want to. I don't want to do anything. I don't have an ounce of motivation. I can barely move my hand to write this. I've always had depression. But the drugs he gives us only makes it exponentially worse. What's the point? What's the point of following his orders or refusing them? Nothing matters. Everything is temporary. So it doesn't matter how I spend my time here because sooner or later I'll just die like everybody else. I seem to be the only one who gets that. Everybody knows they die in the end, but they still frolic around going are giving everything they've got. Everybody just ignores the fact that none of us mean anything and that we'll all cease to exist in the end. Couldn't give a fuck. So that's why I'm gonna kill myself as soon as I get the chance. You should too. Because you don't matter. None of us do. Karen. I'm gonna exit out of this now. There's a silver key in the back. I can't. It can't be used on the door, but it can be used to unlock something else. Probably this. Yep. <laughs> Use the silver key to. You found to open this drawer. Inside lays another piece of paper. I spoke to Will earlier. He wants to escape. I don't care if we do or not. But even after everything. We've been through. Will's been nice to me. So I want to help him. I know that that goes against everything I said before. Like I said, I don't... I am done caring for... I'm done caring if anything makes sense. And if it goes well, then I'll get to see my fiancé again. And I miss him. I told Will about the phone I saw while I was upstairs. I'm going to help him use it to call the police. And I'm not showing the doctor this log. I'm just writing this one to comfort myself. If this doesn't work, then I'm going to slit my wrists with the knife I've been hiding under my bed. Oh! It's her bed. The sheets are neat and pristine. I find a steak knife hidden under the pillow. She said she was going to use it to kill herself if the plan went south. Guess she never did. I haven't found a phone just yet, but I think I'm close. Just keep making your way through the rooms. It won't be long now. This is the bed where he slept. Am I the guy who killed the child? My playing is the guy who killed the child. You can only imagine the horrific thoughts that went through his mind as he slept here. There's nothing remarkable about this lamp. Out of curiosity, you decide to try and turn it on. Pull the chain, but nothing lights up. You look behind the lamp table, searching for an explanation. The cord's been cut. Ah. Yeah, that'd do it. 
This lamp doesn't look like it's been used in a long time. It's covered in dust. This table seems to have seen its fair share of use. There's a stack of typed papers on top of it. Dr. Nelson is making me write this on a typewriter as a form of brain stimulation. Okay? Weird. I don't think he's I don't think he's even going to read this. I'm just listening to him because I don't want anything bad to happen. Anyways, my name is Charles Aaron. Right now I'm being held against my will in the house of a man named Oliver Nilsson. He conducts tests on me and the other subjects here, forces drugs into us, and if we don't cooperate, then he tortures us in the room we need help. In the room. We need help. Things aren't going well. The others and myself are each responding differently to the treatment. That sick man is even conducting these tests on a little girl. I'd kill him if I got the chance. Have you ever thought about what it would be like to kill somebody? I have. I didn't used to think about stuff like that, but it's been on my mind lately. I think it's the effect of the I think it's the effect that drugs are having on me. I know it's troublesome, but I can't tear my mind away from the idea of it. It's just so fascinating. The idea of taking everything that someone is, all their hopes, thoughts, memories, everything that makes them who they are, and just stopping it. Forever. I can only imagine the rush of doing that. Then, of course, there's the process which is equally as intriguing. I wonder how I would go about it. Probably slowly, making sure I take my time to do it right. I'll have to put some more thought into this. How about no? Have you ever thought about killing someone before? I have. There's a little girl kept in the horror house with us. I used to look at her and feel sadness. Pity for her that of all people, an innocent little girl was being held in here. Yesterday I looked at her and saw something different. I asked Dr. Nilsson if I could have some alone time with her. He said yes. Today was the day I was allowed to see her. I was so excited. I even held on to a knife from my last meal so that I could try it on try it out on her. Yeah, we kind of already figured that part. As soon as the doctor left us alone, I was upon her. I started by stabbing her chest several times, sliding the knife in and out from between her ribs, and then a few sloppy stabs for good measure. Eight to be exact. Then I moved on to her stomach. I made an incision down the middle so I could reach in and feel around the wet, warm feeling of her blood excited me. I ripped out her insides and began to pile them up next to her. At this point, her breathing had stopped. Then the doctor slammed open the door and brought me back to my room. He was yelling something, but I wasn't really listening. You see, just before he came in to stop me, I had licked some of the blood off my fingers just to see what it tasted like. I was too busy swishing it around inside my mouth to bother listening to what he had to say. You're sadistic. Whoa. This is going to be my final log. I don't have much more to say. So it seems useless to bother writing anything else down. But all that but all that aside, I've had some revelations as of late that I'd like to end these logs with. I've been thinking a lot about what it means to kill someone, why it means so much or so little. We're no different than any other animals. 
So why is it murder when I brain somebody using my favorite tools? But not when a praying mantis rips her mate's head off. There exists a law among men that is immoral to kill one another. By not killing somebody, you're only delaying their inevitable death. I used to be like you, afraid of taking someone's life, until the experiment changed me. But it was surprisingly easy to change me. It's like this part of me always existed. existed. The experiment just let it out to play. Which means that the same monster who lusts for blood inside of me is also lying dormant within everybody else. Your friends, your family, you. Everybody has a part of them that would like to take their blade to the throat of another. Nobody is different. Nobody is special. Wow. And if it's this easy to unleash that part of yourself, then who knows who else could become like I am now. Am I hearing things? I thought I just heard something. I know you've thought about killing someone before. Everybody you know and love as. What would it be like? How would you do it? How would you feel once it was all over? Most importantly, who would you kill? Everybody has someone deep down that they'd, they'd kill if they got you. You may think you don't, but on some subconscious level, the person is, the person is there waiting for you to finally do it. So the next time you see one of your loved ones, think about who they'd like to kill. It could be you. Ah! This calendar only has one page. <laughs> What's even the point then if it only has one page with one date? There's a key hidden behind the single page. That was probably the idea of Charles in the first place. What's the point? No, it was. What's the point? Squeak! I found a phone. We're going to get you out of here. After this room, there should be a game sequence. I managed to put a phone in there. You just have to get to it when you play the game. So this is goodbye. Good luck, Will. Okay, so I'm, wait, what? I'm, I'm Will. Okay. This was your desk. Okay, so I'm the he that's not the sadistic one. To anyone reading this, my name is William Brown. I snuck some paper and a pen into my room from upstairs so I could write this. I'm being held captive in the house of a sociopath, sociopathic goth, the 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 sociopathic doctor. If anybody finds this, call the police. He conducts strange experiments on us, always talking about ridding us of free will. We need help. There are four of us being held here. Me, one other guy, one woman, and one little girl. He injects us with strange drugs and gives us orders. If we don't obey, he takes us into the room for a session. He tortures us in there. I don't know how I'm going to send this out. Maybe I'm just writing it for my own sanity. But please, send someone. Next to the paper, there's a key. Well, that was easy to find. This is your bed. You remember how uncomfortable it was. What? The store requires one key. Fine, okay. Use the key to open the drawer. There's two pieces of paper in here. I don't know how much longer I can take this. The drugs are taking their toll on me. 
I need more. He's got me addicted, but he only gives them to me as a reward now. So I've started faking it. I pretend not to have any emotions, thoughts, nothing of the sort. I act like a robot. That's what he wants, right? For someone to lose it and become a mindless slave? He's pleased with my progress, so I'm just going to keep pretending and hope for the best. I might try and formulate a plan to escape with the others. I spoke to the woman who's in here with us. Her name is Karen. At least I think so. At least I think so. I can't remember. I can't really remember anything. The effects of the drugs are getting worse. I can't tell what's really, what's real anymore. I don't even know if this is a dream or not. I'm so tired. I don't even feel it when he messes with me during our sessions in the room. Whenever I followed his orders, I was pretending, faking it. Now I just don't care. I do what he says because I've lost the ability to resist. That doesn't mean I'm not going to try and escape. Like I said earlier, I talked to Karen and she says she thinks she knows where a phone is. We're going to try and make a run for it and call the police. But if I can hardly write this or keep a coherent thought, how am I supposed to do that? We'll have to see. I'll try, but if it doesn't work, then that's the end of it. Wish me luck. They were hidden in here so Dr. Nelson wouldn't find them. There's a key underneath the papers. Alright, time for the mini game. How's this gonna go? Retrieve yourself. Get to the phone. All right, got to the phone. Man wakes up from weeks long coma. A man by the name of William Brown woke up from a three week coma yesterday. Brown was initially hospitalized on April 14th of this year. After he was rescued by police from the house where he was being held hostage, along with three other individuals, none of whom survived. Okay, so this is the reality of things. Brown had managed to find a phone and call the police for help. The man holding them hostage, Dr. Oliver Nelson, had been conducting experiments on the prisoners, leaving three of them dead and William Brown with severe brain trauma, resulting in him, fa in him falling into a coma shortly after being rescued. Nelson committed suicide before police could apprehend him. Okay, uh... Is that it? And, yeah, okay, that's it. Papers found, 20 out of 20. Booyah, 100% run, bro! Oh, man, that was, uh... That was a creepy version of Escape the Room kind of game. All right, well, uh, yeah. That was free to will. <laughs> if you want to try the game out for... If you want to try the game out for yourself, uh, just link in the description in the comment... Oh my gosh, I can't speak right now. <sighs> if you want to try the game out for yourself, there'll be a link in the description below. Uh, other than that, if you like the video... Push that like button and so far you can't see it anymore. If you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any ideas for me as far as any horror games go for like nostalgia or anything like that, just let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, 